What's up everyone? Welcome to the show with the worst name in the world. Welcome to the Fleet of My Fantastic Show. Let's get started. Now before we start, I have two more things I want to talk about. First of all, if you want to skip a question, you can just go below this video into the description and there you'll be able to read all the questions that we have for this episode and you can just skip ahead to whichever question you're interested in. Secondly, I have an email that I got from Thomas, which I just thought was interesting and I just wanted to share it with you guys. And he writes, for some reason I feel envious instead of inspired when I look at the big artists out there. I sometimes look them up on Wikipedia and find out uh, they're either younger or slightly older than me. I'm 23. This totally destroys my sense of hunger for it and as a result, I never even start. Uh, and I don't really have advice for that because something, that's something that I have myself and um, as far as I know, that's something every songwriter has and every artist has, right? We all look up to our idols and we're all amazed by how uh, people like Ariana Grande can be such amazing singers at that age. Secondly, we got a question from Jackson. My biggest challenge is probably finishing songs. Little projects get started, but then it's like I can never settle on details and get too picky with it, thus spending too much time on them and giving up after a while. This in turn affects my ability to start projects. Not sure what can be done to help. I got a similar question from Ruben who says, I was wondering if you had any tips for frustration when writing and finishing a song and a similar one from Hjalte who says, do you have any technique for when you're stuck halfway through? I mean, the, I mean, the thing that I use to conquer it is just giving myself tight deadlines, right? I have talked to songwriters. Some of my students use like t things like yeah, where you give yourself 10 minutes to finish a certain part of a song. So they'll give themselves like 10 minutes for just the chords, 10 minutes for the sound of the chords, 10 minutes for the melodies, stuff like that, so that they push through it rather quickly. And I feel that's a really good way of doing it. It sounds um, really rushed and it is in a way, but what's really happening is you're just unlocking that logical part of your brain and it's all creativity. And that what that comes down to is really um, splitting your creative process into two parts and that is the creative versus the critical phase. And this is something I learned from a, I think a, a TED video, a TED talk some years ago. And the idea behind it is that you start always, you have to split that into two phases. You always start with a creative phase where you just write stuff, right? You just start without judging yourself. And that's hard as, you know, easier said than done, but that's kind of what you want to do. You just want to write, 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 write. And the, the best way to do that is to give yourself tight deadlines. Um, and then the second part is the critical phase where you just then go over what you've written and you analyze what you've written. Um, you know, so that's, that's kind of what I do is using those TED, uh, these tight deadlines to kind of um, speed myself up and to free myself from, from those critical nagging thoughts in the back of my head. And what I've found is if you write songs fast, you also don't run into that problem that much where um, you're really struggling with how to finish a song. Because if you're like, okay, I got to finish this song in like half a day, just I have to know the exact structure of the song within half a day or, you know, five hours or something like that, then typically it's just way harder to get stuck. Another reason why you might be stuck is because you have a section that really isn't working. So maybe you have a course that's great and you maybe have a verse that's perfect, but the pre-course just isn't working the way that you envisioned it. And I have a song at the moment that I'm working on right now that has that same problem. And I really love the pre-course, but it's just not working for the song. So what do I have to do? Well, I have to kill my darlings. And um, it's one thing figuring out what that's what those sections are that are messing up your song. And the next thing that's hard enough. But the next thing is you have to go and change it and take it out and just, you know, it's never going to be seen by anyone. So that's hard, but it's killing your darlings is what it's called in uh, screenwriting business as, as far as I know. And um, what, what I also learned from screenwriting is um, you know, I'm just a hobbyist, not like a professional or anything. But what I also learned from from those books that I read on that was that rewriting doesn't necessarily mean refining. It really means rewriting. Like some uh, authors will write a chapter of a book 17 times, not going over that same chapter 17 times what they've written, not refining it, but really actually writing the same chapter 17 times. And there's like stories that J.K. Rowling 
wrote the first uh, Harry Potter book seven or 11 times or something like that. And that I think goes to show just how much work it is to make something really stand out and really great by really rewriting it, killing your darlings, just letting all of that go and saying like, no, okay, this didn't work for some reason. Let's try it again with just the most important stuff that I really, really loved in the first version and see if I can make it work this time. So that's my advice on that. Let's move on to uh, the next question, which comes from Claire. She says, I'm currently studying music in high school. I really enjoy writing songs. However, I'm not too sure on where to start to actually sound any good. I think my main question is, should I write my lyrics first, the chords or the melody? I have a similar question from Jose, who says, most of the time people come up with music and then write lyrics, but what advice would you give to people that do it the other way around? Lyrics first and then put the music to that. Thanks in advance. There's two sides of this question that I think are interesting. First of all, there are different ways to write a song. There is no correct or incorrect way. So I will typically start with whatever I feel is most important in my song, whatever I think is gonna be the centerpiece in my song. So I think this song has to be all about the lyrics or if I have a really cool idea for a story that I wanna tell through lyrics, then I will start with the lyrics. But if I have a really cool musical idea, which is more the case more often in my case, um, then I will start with whatever that is. You know, it might be a synth sound or it might be a cool melody that I figured out for the chorus. It might be an effect, anything to that extent. So I'll start with whatever I think is going to be the centerpiece of my song and the rest I'm going to build around it, which is what I found how most songwriters do it these days, to have one thing that the whole song centers around. So that's the first part of this question, I think. Part two is that it doesn't really matter what you start with as long as those two things, or actually all elements in your song, have a feedback loop in place. Every part of your song needs to be in balance with everything else that you do, right? So if you change one line in the lyrics, you might have to change the melody. And if you change the melody, you might have to change the groove. And if you might have to change the groove, you might have to change the harmony, etc. Everything is connected, right? That's why it's called holistic songwriting as well. Everything in your songwriting is connected. And obviously the image is part of that as well. And your personality, everything, the production, all of it feeds into the song, what we experience at the end as a listener when we listen to your song. So balance is hugely important. And what that means for us when we write is that everything has to feed into everything else that we do. So when I write a lyric first, I can't just write that lyric and then make it, turn it into a melody. That's usually not gonna work. I mean, it might work in one in a thousand you know, songs, if I'm lucky, but usually what happens is I'll have a text, I'll sing through it, see if I can find a cool line that works with any one of the, of the lines of my lyric. And then um, whatever I have, I'll keep that. And then I'll have to kind of rewrite the rest of my lyric to figure out something that will work in a melodic structure. And that's how I will work if I start with lyrics. Um, if I'm starting with the melody, I'll have a melody first, uh, meaning that the lyrics come second, and then I'll have to kind of puzzle all the lyrics onto what I already have. And that's just how it works. It's really a puzzling game. Like if you're frustrated about this process and if you think it's really hard and you can't do it, well, that's because it is hard and you probably can't really do it. It's just really that difficult. And it takes me a really long time to write a good lyric. And it's really just puzzling work. You're just figuring, trying to figure out the right words that could go with your melody. So that, I guess, is my answer to this question. Um, there's different paths to different types of songs. Whatever you want to be your centerpiece in your, centerpiece in your song, that's what you should start with. And uh, don't forget the feedback loop. Everything feeds into each other, right? Next question comes to us from Athena and she says, my main struggle is since I've had severe depression for seven years now, most of my lyrics are either sad about depression or about death. My main goal with this is to write uplifting lyrics to help people in the same or similar situation to me. I really don't know how I can be helped in this. This is a difficult question to answer, obviously coming from a distance and obviously I don't know Athena's background, but I can tell you a little bit about my personal experiences because I have had depressions when I was a teenager and it wasn't really easy for me. Um, but I've lived through those depressions and you know, here I am today and helping others and I'm having a great time doing it. So thank you all for that again. Um, first of all, what I've found is that if, you, if you're really instable yourself, if you're really not stable, if you're really not sane, then it's really hard to help others to put a foot forward and even lift someone else's problems if you have so many problems of your own. So 
I think what you should focus on first and foremost is fixing yourself and getting yourself to a point where you're stable and feel great about yourself or at least good about yourself, right? We all feel shitty about ourselves sometimes. And what I think, what I think helps with that is having a goal, knowing what you want to do, and that might take years to figure out. And I've changed my plans several times in my life and that's totally fine. But having a goal, I think, it's, I mean, I wouldn't call it important, but it really helps in leading a better life, I think. So that I think is, I think is a big part of it. I also think you shouldn't force it with, with your lyrics because we are, we write what we are, right? If we are happy people, we're going to write happier music. And I write much, much more happy music since I'm, you know, in the last couple of years than I wrote when I was an angsty teenager. So back then my songs were all really dark and very depressing, you know, and that has really changed in the last couple of years. So I can really say from a personal experience that the way you write really reflects in how you live. Um, so if you want to change your writing, if you change yourself, that's going to take care of itself, basically. Um, some recommendations that I have for you, if you want to um, lead a better life and want to be a happier person, some I've read a lot of books on this and it really helps. Having someone explain enough reasons to me why being happy is a good thing help me. You might be different. You might be a more, maybe a more emotionally driven person. I'm a very logical person. I guess I'm very German that way. But the books that help me uh, live through my, uh, if you, I don't know if you could call it a depression, but my, my darker times, let's, let's put it like that, were um, Tony Robbins books. That's T-O-N-Y Robbins, R-O-B-B-I-N-S. Uh, he has many really great books. He's a little old fashioned, um, but he's one of the greats for a reason. Uh, Tim Ferriss, I also really enjoy. He has a very open way to, um, of living life and he's very quick with learning stuff and I just find his approach so fascinating that it's hard to be depressed while reading his stuff because he's just such a fascinating guy. And also a book that really helped me is Awareness by Anthony D. Mello, I believe his name is. D. Mello, that's D-E-M-E-L-L-O. He's an Indian Jesuit monk. And I'm personally not um, religious in any way, but uh, I really enjoyed that book very much. And his, um, his way of seeing beliefs and um, faith actually really resonated with me. And Tim Ferriss uh, would be, you know, for our work week is the kind of the standard. And Tony Robbins, just anything you can get your hands on. You can even go on YouTube, type in uh, whichever title you're interested in, like find out the titles first on Wikipedia or on Amazon or something like that. Go on YouTube, type in a title, an audiobook, and you'll find a lot of those books by Tony Robbins or Tim Ferriss on here on YouTube. And you can actually just, you know, get them somehow. You know, sometimes there's a link in the description that you can download it at and then I just listen to it in my car. That's what I usually do. And that really helps, you know. Um, little side note here is I like to listen to a lot of audiobooks and I like to read a lot. So um, I have found that the more I surround myself with information of a particular kind, for example, stuff about happiness, the more happy I get. Or if it's about intelligence or something like that or science, then I'm I get more intelligent. It really works like that. So surround yourself with the things that interest you. If you surround yourself with sad, dark things, you're going to lead a sad, dark life, right? Next question. Hi, Fleetman. I'm very excited to be on your email list. My greatest challenge in songwriting currently is balancing my enjoyment for it versus treating it like a job, as I would like to make music for a career. How do you preserve your passion for writing when doing it even when you don't feel like it? Well, Jordan, um, there's really three things that I do. The first one is working with other writers. Collaborating in your writing is so much fun if you're the right person for the job. It can be tough to find the right person. And it took me many years to find some writing partners that I just seem to flow with. Um, because there's so many songwriters that can really break your flow or that are just into a completely kind, different kind of music. So it can be very difficult to write with other people. But if you find the right person, man, it's a blast and I wouldn't want to go without it. Uh, secondly, you should, I think you should write for yourself sometimes. At least that's what I do. Some people really see it purely as a job and they just write music for whatever you know, job they have at the moment. Um, I personally just sometimes write music just because I want to. And it helps me keep it light and it helps me understand 
that this really is a beautiful thing and not just for making money. It's just what it is, you know, just the writing itself can be fun. So uh, first of all, work with other people, write for yourself sometimes. And thirdly, you should also consider working faster. Um, if you spend months on a song, which I think you should absolutely do in the beginning, like your first hundred songs, I think you should write over a period of three or four years at least, um, maybe four, you know, more like five or six years. Um, after that, I really highly recommend you go faster and faster though. And I write my songs in about one to two days. If it's a more complicated subject, a uh, more complicated song, I might go for one or two weeks, but I'll never go, never ever go above that because my songs just tend to mutate when I do that, right? I keep, keep forgetting what my original idea was and I just get too carried away in all these little details. So I find my songs really lose their effect once I write on them for too long. Uh, Tim Ferriss is a has a nice way of looking at this. He says uh, for any skill that he tackles, he has this idea, um, what would this feel like or what, what would this be like if it was easy? And I guess that's kind of my advice to you. Just think about it. What would it feel like? What would songwriting be like if it was easy? And then just do that. It doesn't have to be complicated. Um, you know, I keep talking about all these complicated structures and the way, you know, writers write melodies and it's all sounds very complicated, but it doesn't have to be complicated. If you write great songs, then you don't need to think about all of that in the background. If your songs turn out great, then there's no need to do any of that really. So, um, yeah, again, work with people, write for yourself sometimes and work fast because working fast, um, also makes sure that you stay invested in the song and don't get bored with it either because getting bored with your songs is the worst. Last question today comes to us from Paul and he says, do you think we have to have experienced at least something similar to what we write about to be authentic or can someone still come across as authentic when they make something up entirely? Well, Paul, um, I think you are a little bit on the wrong track here. I think you are overestimating just how important just how important lyrics really are to a listener. Yes, they are important, um, but I think we still, I said this last episode, I think music is really what we kind of hold on to, right? We make decisions emotionally and justify logically, and that's where the lyrics come in. The lyrics are there to make a justification for what we experience with the music. So I think in, in music, really the music, it's really the important thing and not so much the lyrics. So all the storytelling and all that stuff, not sure if that's really what is going to convince anyone. If you have a song that's really terribly written, but it has a great lyric, it's going to be really, really hard to convince anyone or to win someone over. It's possible, but it's very, very hard. You'll have some, you'll need to have some very, very emotional lyrics that make up for that lack of emotion in the music. There is an old piece of advice in storytelling and in book writing. As, as you know, I already said that I uh, studied that a little bit by myself, you know, read a lot of books in that because I'm really interested in that kind of stuff. And the old rule is write what you know. And um, it's also, you know, a piece of advice I've heard from Ricky Gervais, Ricky Gervais who said um, that's what he did for The Office and that's, you know, what he considers good advice. I personally think it's BS really, I really don't believe in that at all, especially not for songwriting because in songwriting, we want to go the extra mile. We want to go, we want to go over the edge a little bit. We want to have some images that are crass, that are going to shock us, that have an emotional impact on us. Right. And if we just stick with our normal boring lives, I think it's going to turn people off to be honest. So I would say, don't write what you know, but write what you're interested in. Right. You don't have to have experienced something in order to find it fascinating. So whatever you're interested in, you should be able to write about. And if you're interested in writing a song about jail or, you know, anything for that matter, you should be able to do that, I think. And I, I don't think you should hold back. Ultimately, what I think it comes down to, what I think you're um, missing out in your question is that the theme is not important as the style how we write about something is really more what makes us the writer than what we actually talk about. Because information is just information. That's kind of boring, right? What makes it interesting in music is how the artist interprets it for us. What's his angle to this piece of information, right? What's his side? What's his view of things? So 
I think that's what you should be concerned with more of how you're telling a story, how you're bringing it across. And that is, of course, in the music as well, but it's also in the lyrics. What words are you using? How are you structuring your sentences? What are you uh, telling the listener first in your verse? What are you, how are you developing that in the chorus or in the second verse? So those, I think, are the questions that you really should be asking yourself. Not so much, um, oh, is this really a theme that I should be talking about? Does it fit my personality or my image? It's fine, trust me. I mean, you're an artist. You can do this, right? You can be a little bit cuckoo. You can talk about stuff that is really weird. I've seen music written about pancakes, right? And it's great. It's, it was amazing. It fit the guy's personality. Um, I'll, uh, it's, this guy's name was Mac Lethal, by the way. Really cool uh, like rapper. And he does like a really fast rap about pancakes called the Pancake Rap, I think. So if you want to look for that on YouTube, you can. It doesn't really matter what you rap about as long as you do it uh, with your style. If it's, if it's you, it's fine. The style is much more important than the subject. And there you go. That's the end of the show. If you want to download the show as an MP3, you can do so below this video in the description as I will do with all future episodes as well. So you'll always have the possibility to listen to this in your car if you don't want to watch it on YouTube. Because I understand that these episodes are a little bit longer than my usual stuff. So um, if you don't want to spend half an hour looking at some dude talking to a camera, which I completely get, then just download the whole thing and listen to it in your car. Cool? All right. Good. That's it. I don't have anything else to say. I'll just turn this a little bit for visual ending.